Hi everyone, hope you're all healthy, well, looking forward to a brand new academic year with a very, very different dynamic. So this is a short introduction to the politics, perception and philosophy of physics, otherwise known as PPP. And what we're, one of the things we're going to do, one of the first things we're going to do is tease out this very famous statement from Feynman. Science is the belief in the ignorance of experts. It gives us all a warm, cosy feeling inside because we're good scientists and we like to think everything is completely objective. There's no social dynamics. There's no influences and no biases. That's something we're really going to dissect um, in its entirety during the course of PPP. Okay, so these are some of the questions we're going to address in, in the module. But first of all, I need to point out that website right at the top, f34ppp.com. That's an externally facing website which complements the um, Moodle pages. And it's got all the course materials from last year and indeed from previous years, including lecture slides, including lecture video, including lecture audio, including examples of coursework and examples of feedback and examples of SET questionnaires and SEM module uh, feedback and our responses to all of that. So you can glean a lot about PPP from that website. These are just some of the things we're going to cover. You know, what is physics? How would you define science? Is anything actually scientifically proven? Do we prove things in science? Do advances in science proceed as some would claim, including in particular Thomas Kuhn through these, you have normal science and you have this massive paradigm shift and evidence change and we move on to something new. Must the theory be falsifiable? That's popper. Are most scientific papers wrong? That's a title of a very famous paper from about, oh, now it's about 15 years ago. Um, why would somebody say that? And is there any credence in that? We'll talk about peer review. We'll talk about the interface between science and politics, sort of in both directions. One in terms of when politicians claim they want evidence-based policy, do they really want evidence-based policy? And how do we feed in the science and how do we influence with the science and vice versa when scientists are considering the funding landscape and government is considering how it's going to fund scientists. How does that whole dynamic work? How does that influence science? How does that in concert with peer review influence the direction of science? One thing I'd really like to focus on this year, which is why I've got that death of expertise and that, that very scary quote up there is Let's consider the, the, the rise of misinformation and pseudoscience and what social media is doing to the credibility of science and scientists. The whole death of expertise, as Tom Nichols uh, puts it in that, that great book. And if you're looking for reading matter over the summer, I can suggest nothing better than, well, I can suggest the death of expertise. And I would also say another important book for PPP is something called Lost in Math by Sabine Hossenfelder. Both of those books are well worth reading. It's going to be a mixture of lectures, seminars, discussion groups and panels, as it has been in previous years. However, it's going to be very different this year because of social distancing, etc. And one thing we're, we're going to do is have a lot of sessions, probably via Zoom, and particularly using or exploiting the Zoom breakout feature, which is a really neat feature in terms of we can set up the entire class and then we can have breakout sessions where we break up into groups of 10 to 12, say. Typically, somewhere between 40 and 50 do the module each year. So we can break that up into, say, four or five groups and those groups can discuss and debate and then feed back to the entire class. Let's see. It's going to be an interesting experiment for all of us. We'll also have visiting speakers to be confirmed. And then the assessment is through two coursework exercises this year. A physics world type piece, 900 words, that's 30 percent. And then a feature article in the style of a broadsheet. So like the Observer or the Guardian or the Times, or even the Telegraph. Um, as you can see, 2100 words and that will account for 70 percent. There are examples on the website of previous coursework, of previous blog posts from students, and indeed of previous articles that have been sent to Physics World and have been published in Physics World from uh, PPP coursework. All of that's available on the website. One thing I will say, which is absolutely essential, is if you don't like writing, do not do this module. Honestly, go and do Gravity instead. You'll feel much better. Only if you have some degree of an appetite for writing should you do PPP. And 
the focus of the module, as you've seen, is this broader societal context of science, but it's also about improving your writing skills. And we've had a number of students who've done PPP who've gone on to careers in science communication, and they've subsequently emailed myself and Omar back and said how useful they found PPP. And we're going to try and develop your writing skills beyond that of the scientific paper, which is a very formal and formalised type of writing, and uh, where style doesn't really play a key role, unfortunately, in a lot of scientific papers. But if you're writing for a wider audience, you need to find a voice, you need to find cadence and timbre, and you need to be able to communicate effectively and engagingly. This is a, a great example. This sentence is five words. Here are five more words. Five word sentences are fine, but several together are monotonous. Listen to what is happening. The writing is getting boring. The sound of a drones. It's like a stuck record. The ear demands some variety. This next bit is beautiful. Now listen, I vary the sentence length and I create music. Music. The writing sings. It has a pleasant rhythm, a lilt, a harmony. I use short sentences and I use sentences of medium length. And sometimes, when I am sure the reader is rested, I will engage him or her with a sentence of considerable length, a sentence that burns with energy and builds with all the impetus of a crescendo, the roll of the drums, the crash of the cymbals, sounds that say, listen to this, it is important. I'll leave you with this. Compare and contrast. This next thing is taken from a wonderful book, the autobiography of Leon Lederman, who was the guy that coined the term the God Particle. Don't think it's easy to supervise some 50 graduate students. For one thing, one must read their papers. Listen to one of my best students begin his thesis. This field of physics is so virginal that no human eyeball has ever set foot in it. I will leave you with that. Thanks for listening. I look forward to working with you all in the new academic year. Keep well until then. I will see you in September. Bye.